In this video, I derive the risk neutral probability for a binomial tree. Now, we make an assumption about the stock price. So consider a stock trading at S at time t with two possible values at time t plus delta t. So if the stock goes up, we will call that value S times u. So generally u is bigger than one. And if the stock goes down, we call that S times d, with d generally less than one. Now we're going to price a generic derivative, so some derivative. It doesn't really matter what it is. But the risk of the derivative simply depends on this stock price. So we'll assume we have a derivative whose price that we know at time t plus delta t. So if the stock is trading at s times u, we're going to call that d sub u. If the stock is trading at s times d, we'll call that d sub d. And what we want to find out is d, the value of the derivative at time t. Our usual approach is to create a portfolio which has no risk. So we'll create a portfolio with a short one derivative and long delta shares. If the stock goes up, this portfolio is worth S times U times delta minus D sub U. And if the stock goes down, it's worth S times D times delta minus D sub D. And if today that portfolio is worth S times delta minus D. Now what we do is we make this a riskless portfolio so that we are indifferent to whether the stock goes up or stock goes down. So we are going to choose delta such that S times U times delta minus D sub U equals S times D times delta minus D sub D. So we rearrange that equation and we get delta equals D sub U minus D sub D divided by S times U minus S times D. And if you think about this carefully, that is a calculation of the slope d of the derivative. So d sub u minus d sub d is, would be the rise. s times u minus s times d would be the run. Now, this portfolio has no risk, and so it must have the same value at time t as a zero coupon bond paying s times u times delta minus d sub u. We know the value of the zero coupon bond as s times u times delta minus d sub u e to the minus r delta t. Using our arbitrage principles, we know that s times delta minus d equals s times u times delta minus d sub u times e to the minus r delta t. Namely, what we've said is we've got two portfolios, the zero coupon bond or the portfolio that was short one, one option and long delta shares, and those have the same value at time t plus delta t, and nothing happens between now t and t plus delta t, so they must have the same value today. Now we're going to do some algebra. We rewrite this equation to put d to isolate d. And now we do some algebra. First, we'll do some algebra just on that s times u times delta minus d sub u. So s times u times delta minus d sub u, we substitute in the definition of delta. We find a common denominator. And then we rearrange. And we end up with that equation is equal to s times d times du minus s times u times dd, all divided by s times u minus s times d. And we go back to our original equation, and we substitute what we just found out into the original equation. We substitute the value for delta into the original equation, and we multiply this out. Notice that both of these fractions have s's in all the terms of the numerator and s's in all the terms of the denominator, so we can cancel those out. And then we can factor out an e to the minus r delta t. You can see that first term, du minus dd over u minus d, did not have an e to the minus r delta t. So we now have e to the r t delta t there. And then we're going to group all terms with a du together and group all terms with a dd together. And then we can recognize that u minus e to the r delta t over u minus d is the same as 1 
minus e to the r delta t minus d over g minus d. And now we can see that showing up, that um, fraction, e to the r delta t minus d over u minus d, showing up in both places. And we're going to call that our risk-neutral probability. And if we simply substitute this equation in p equals e to the r delta t minus d over u minus d, we get d equals p times du plus 1 minus p times dd, the whole quantity e to the minus r delta t. And it's natural to interpret p and 1 minus p as probabilities of up and down movements. But this, these probabilities are not real probabilities. These are what's known as the risk-neutral probabilities. And so the value of the derivative is the expected payoff in a risk-neutral world discounted at the risk-free rate. And we summarize as follows. Where we have our tree, we know the values on the right-hand side of the tree, du and dd. We can calculate this probability p. And we know d equals p times du plus 1 minus p times dd, all discounted at the risk-free rate, e to the minus r delta t.